Hello, welcome back to Movies with Michael. This is my full review of The Bad Batch Season 2. But if you haven't seen the entire season of The Bad Batch, and especially the finale, there will be a lot of spoilers for it in this video. So consider this your spoiler warning, and let's get started. Bad Batch Season 2 is the second season of the solo series following Clone Force 99 as they navigate their way through the galaxy with the rising power of the Galactic Empire. And with what this season does is it really shows how the Empire is slowly getting rid of the clones, it's declaring them as obsolete, and they're bringing in what we know as the Stormtroopers. And that can lead to some pretty interesting ep episodes with different characters that are the clones are leading more and more troops that aren't their brothers, and they're seeing that they are unruly, but the clones are becoming more and more independent themselves, But and you can see how their ideals of how the war should go and what they need to do can go against what the Empire wants, and how the Empire can just get rid of them anytime they want to. And that brings us to the fact that, as I predicted from the end of Season 1, Crosshair, the one of Clone Force 99, who left at the end of Season 1 to be with the Empire, He's seeing that he made a bad choice, and he's seeing more and more that the Empire doesn't care about him at all, even though he is an excellent soldier, an excellent sniper, he's amazing, but to them he's just another tool in their toolkit that if it breaks, and if it doesn't work the way they want, they can just throw it out. And we see how he is being regretful that he did leave his family, his brothers, behind. And with that, we go over to the Bad Batch themselves and how they're trying to figure out what they need to do, whether it's helping the Rebellion or continuing to do all these odd jobs for Sid. But that's where the big problem with this season comes in, because unfortunately, a lot of this season falls into the category of a day in the life. They wake up one morning and they do this, and then the episode ends. That is not a very good way to do, that, to do a season, because... Again, like every single TV show, even the best ones, will have filler episodes, but these episodes don't mean anything. They just go and do a mission and come back, and then they're done and it means nothing. It doesn't contribute to the larger narrative. It doesn't do anything at all. And although you could say, well, it's technically realistic, not everything can contribute to the larger narrative, well, yes, that's true, but when you're doing a, a series like this, that's not a good idea to do that, because then it just causes episodes to feel very bland and dull compared to the episodes that do matter. And we did get some very cool episodes in this season, but unfortunately we spent a bit too much time doing these boring and mundane things that don't really contribute to anything larger going on in the galaxy. And as for the Bad Batch themselves, we get to focus more on tech. Tech was a big one that they focused on this season. There were a lot of episodes where we get to saw, well, we'll see what he could do with other characters, how he... Well, well, how her, him, and Omega are getting along, and how they clash, and what tech has to, how kind of how tech has to change in that, and of course that is because at the end of this season we see him, all that we know, die. Now, of course, since this is Star Wars, I'm not going to rule out the possibility that he is dead. I mean, Palpatine came back in the sequel, so whatever. But it was a very interesting way to end that with how the Empire is closing in on the Bad Batch, and I think. In later seasons, we're going to see most, if not all, of these members of the Bad Batch get killed by the Empire, or get turned into like other soldiers for the Empire to do. And of course, we have our villains, Doctor Hemlock and Doc uh, well Admiral Rampart from a bit of season one. That's interesting, and and although Doctor Hemlock isn't really a very interesting character at this point, it was cool to see how he reacts to other Imperial officers like Tarkin, and of course. Colonel Krennic or Director Krennic from the end of this season. And it seems that this series, The Bad Batch, and also The Mandalorian, are focusing on the sub-theme of cloning. How does it work in Star Wars? What, How people are trying to use it? And of course with Omega, she's kind of the key to what the Empire wants to do. We're not quite sure what they're trying to do yet, but for the end of season two, this season, of course we have the Doctor say that she is Omega's sister, which means that there were more clones going on. She, for, But of course, she could be lying. But she also could be a clone of, female clone of Jenga Fett like Omega is. But we'll just have to see till the next, wait till the next season to see what they do with that. So, yes, The Bad Batch Season 2 was a good enough time. It had a lot of problems, and it still has some big issues that I want them to get rid of with Star Wars shows. But it had enough to keep me there. But I'm not going to say it was good. So that's why I'm going to give Bad Batch Season 2 overall a 6 out of 10. 
And with that, we've made it to the end of another video. Thank you all for joining me today, and please remember to comment down below what you thought about The Bad Batch Season 2. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or was it right there in between like it was with me? And be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more content about movies and the occasional TV series. That's all for now, and I'll see you all next time.